To uh, Tyrus, what is your favorite story or what you your pick? I went with um, Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. and honestly, I, um, I made a shirt because that's what I do in my free time when yes. I'm not fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my life matters with a big brain. Yeah, that's because nice. what it basically comes down to is compliance mm -hmm. and resistance. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, I would say, 99 percent of all the video stuff that you've seen, where you've seen po police brutality and things like that, it's during what? Non-compliance. Right. And what that simply means, I'm 6'8", 390 business pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I'm light-skinned, I have a beard, I listen to music loud. When I get pulled over, mm -hmm. it's never fun. Yeah. It's, it sucks for me. Yeah. Because the cop gets out and goes, huh, because he'll see this sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, because I don't want him to go, huh. <laughs> because he doesn't know. Right, right, right. There's a giant tattoo, and he's, he has to investigate to see who yeah. I am and what I'm about. Yeah. Hands are on the steering wheel. I ask to do everything. If he asks me to get out of the car, I get out of the car. Right. That's compliance. Yeah. In all these cases, they're not, it's simple. That and must be great when you get out of the car. Oh, it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> For him. That. Yes. Because yeah. he does, the, and it's not this, it's. <laughs> yeah, it's. And I do this amazing thing because then I go, yeah. what would you like to do, officer? You yeah. Know, and, but I'm being compliant. Do I right. like it? Yeah. No. But it's not, he's. The office, he's the police. Right. He's the law. He has the right to investigate. Mm -hmm. When I'm compliant, nothing bad's going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. It's not my point. moment to yeah. resist arrest. And when everyone videotapes me resisting arrest and being taken down, that's where bad things happen. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make me Rosa Parks. Right. Mm -hmm. That makes me a criminal. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with color. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make one thing that really bothered me. Like last night I talked to several, I call, I wanted some more information because I'm on one side of it. I'm not a police officer. Right. So I actually had a chance to talk to a few of uh, police officers. And the, the number one thing they all said, none of them knew each other and they were different colors and origins, whatever, said the same thing. Black Lives Matter is an insult to every guy who puts on a badge and runs to those bullets being fired in those neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And these are high crime areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are things that are happening. They're in a war. Yeah. Every day. Mm -hmm. So my argument or my challenge would be to black life leaders, which is not many of them. I mean, even the Johnny come lately like Jesse Jack didn't get involved. You know, it's bad yeah. when Jesse Jackson, who's never wanted a free lunch in his life, <laughs> not going to come to something for them to be cops for a week. Yeah. For them to roll around these neighborhoods and see what they go through. Yeah. Because it's it's not it's not OK. The resistance and the videotapes, our system is designed for us. Mm -hmm. So if you're arresting me and you're rough with me and it's on video, I go through the proper channels, I will sue you. Yes. You won't have your job anymore. That is true. But me fighting you back and picking that moment mm -hmm. to be, re and most people that are resistant is because they have something to hide. Thank you very much, Adam. Well, it's a tweet from Black Lives Matter co-founder Yusra Kogali that has raised eyebrows and concern. It reads, quote, please Allah, give me strength not to cuss slash kill these men and white folks. This is Kogali confronting the premier yesterday when Kathleen Wynne addressed Black Lives Matter's protesters at Queen's Park. Wynne promised to meet with the group to discuss its concerns about police and the SIU. As for Kogali's tweet, I spoke with Sandy Hudson from Black Lives Matter earlier tonight. This is extremely frustrating and emotional for me because we slept outside for two weeks to get somebody to care about death in our community. And this is what you've decided to focus on. No, it actually, is we focused very, on, we focused very, on everything else that has gone on with the Black Lives Matter. But it's this very is part of the whole story, though. Has there been a story yet on Pierre Boni? Has there been stories on has Black there? Lives Matter? We've been has live there? there almost every day. That is a public interest story about another black life taken about, by huh? police in Montreal. Can we I am back? going to be talking about what is in the public public interest with respect to, to black with death, you. with respect to black death in my community. So are there any Premier Kathleen Wynne apologize for the tweet? Premier Kathleen Wynne has committed oh, no. to having a public conversation with us. And what would be really so why did she wonderful, the tweet, what would then? be really wonderful is, is if media would talk to her about what those plans are going to be. We she have, is the premier, she's accountable story. to the people. The SIU has not been accountable to the people, and that's what you should be focusing on. Now, Sandy Hudson went on for several more minutes, but refused to actually comment on the tweet from Israel Kogali. For you, starts now.
Two Westland teenagers murdered execution style in a vacant Detroit field. Now, two and a half years later, their killers are going to prison for life. Fox 2's Amy Lang with more from today's emotional sentencing. These families have waited so long for justice. Finally, their opportunity to address the men who killed their sons. But what one of the defendants had to say to them left everyone shaking their heads. In the end, knowing who Jordan was, I believe he would want me to offer forgiveness. Although I know I may struggle with that endeavor for the rest of my life, it would be what Jordan would want. On behalf of Jordan and myself, I will pray for forgiveness for both of you. And no matter what sentence the court imposes today, these defendants will have to answer to God. God's got this. I'd like to say sorry to the families of Ayanna Jones, Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, and I want to apologize to them for not being able to get justice for their loved ones who was murdered in cold blood. And in respect for the peaceful protest, I want to say hands up, don't shoot. Black Lives Matter. That's it, Your Honor. Um, sir, the court believes you represent a danger to the community. This appears not to be an isolated incident. The court notes the strength of the case against you. The court also notes that a police officer had a shot taken from him, most likely from the vehicle you were in, where there were two guns found, where shortly thereafter you bailed out of that car. And Your Honor, they, I don't interrupt the me, sir. Been, sir, don't interrupt Dale, wait the court. Up. Hold Thank on, Dale. hold on. Dale. And they found you with a gun holster on, hiding in the water under someone's dock. Yes, the court does believe you represent a danger not only to the people of the community who own homes, who own vehicles, but the court also notes that a police officer had a shot taken at him. So, anything you want to add, Mr. Miller? Yes, uh, my reading of the probable cause affidavit never places Mr. Clark inside the car. Okay. Running from the area where the car was. And but, the co-defendant okay. Wesley admits that Clark was there with everyone else to burglarize the vehicles in the area. So, okay, so the guns are found in the car. Mr. Clark is never connected with the car. Again, how are we connecting him with the shot being fired? So I'm going to say shots being fired, and he's running from the scene because shots are being fired. Right, this, right. And he's got in, a in holster. light of what's and happening he's got a in, 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 in got it, Your Honor. Sir, in I'm light of what's happening in this country uh, with with unarmed black men being killed don't by police, hand, don't hand me running, that. Don't hand me that. From, uh, we, shots don't being don't fired even go down that road. I'm not going to let you go down that road. That is so off base. We've got a young man. I don't care what color he is. He's in a neighborhood he doesn't live in at 1.41 in the morning, hiding on someone under somebody's dock in the water with a holster on after a police officer had a shot taken at him. Don't hand me this, he's a black man uh, running from police brutality. Look, that is not appropriate in this case. That's not there. I'm not going to let you poison this case with bringing in something that has nothing to do with it. Your bond's $100,000 on count three and a hundred thousand dollars on count four thank you now donny heath i gotta take a break i'll be right back all right everybody take a seat and watch this segment I promise you you'll find it very interesting that black lives matter heard across the country and the campaign on the campaign trail most recently outrage over the case of mansoor ball bay a young black man who was killed by two white st louis police officers police say he pointed a gun at them before they fired. His family disputes that. But where is the outrage over another death, the death of Jamila, nine-year-old Jamila Bolden, killed by a stray bullet in her home as she did her homework? At least one woman is very angry. I want you to listen to this video. It's from an African-American grandmother named Peggy Hubbard. Who do you think they protested for? The thug, the criminal because they're hollering police brutality. Are you kidding me? Police brutality? How about black brutality? You black people, my black people, you are the most violent I have ever seen in my life. You're shooting out the police. Police drops your ass. Oh, poor so-and-so. He died due to police brutality. 127 homicides later, y'all want to holler police brutality? Black people, you're a joke. You're tearing up communities for thugs and criminals. You think the police are out here for fun? You think they're out here for games? They're not going to tuck you in. 
They're not going to give you a cookie and, and sing you a, a, a lullaby and tuck you in. No, they're going to pop a cap in your ass. You shoot at them, they're going to shoot at you. Jamila Bolton, nine years old, lost her life in her own home doing her homework. Second, third day of school, looking forward to her future, and she's killed by a drive-by shooting, and it was the wrong house. It should have never happened to anybody, and it happened to her, a child. Uh, my husband and I were sitting on the couch watching television. I didn't even know about Jamila's death until the next day. We were sitting on the couch watching television, and they break into normal broadcasting because there's a full-blown riot in downtown, well, not downtown, but midtown St. Louis in the neighborhood I grew up in, the Walnut Park, Wells Goodfellow, that area, North City. And the police executed a search warrant. Um, suspects are in the house. They're running from the police, shooting at the police, and the police shot one of the suspects, and he was killed. And from what we understand, he had a gun, and it was a stolen weapon. Jamila, the day before, I didn't hear anything on it on the news, and I'm an avid news watcher. Nothing was about, nothing was reported. It was just a blip. This guy dies, this Bay guy dies, and all of a sudden, there's a full-blown riot in the neighborhood I grew up in. And there's nothing for her and we're hollering, Black Lives Matter. He had his chance to matter. He chose his path. He chose his destiny. Jamila never got her destiny. She never got her promises. Her, her life mattered. Her dreams mattered. Her vision mattered. She could have been the next Secretary of State. She could have been the next Attorney General. She never got a chance. And where was the outrage over her? We will make America great again.